Hey everyone. So a while back, I made my first YouTube video here about creating your first machine learning pipeline with ML.NET. However, now it's been about a year and a half ago and there has been a lot of changes. In fact, I think I did this back when it was 0 0.1 version and now we're around 1.4 version. So there's been a lot of breaking changes since then. And so what I wanted to do is kind of make do the same machine learning pipeline with ML.NET, but using the latest version with it. All right, so we're in Visual Studio here with uh, just a regular console project in .NET Core. And first thing I'm gonna do is install the ML.NET NuGet package. And right now the latest version is version 1.4. All right, so we got that. And we're going to use the same data that we did before, the salary data, where it has the years of experience and the salary based on the years of experience. So we're going to create a machine learning model that takes the years of experience and tells us approximately what salary somebody should be getting. All right, so the first thing here in the new version, uh, the newer versions of ML.NET is that we need to create new ML context. And this allows us to do pretty much everything that we need to do within ML.NET. So I'm gonna do a few things here in this video. Uh, I'm gonna load the data. And then I'm gonna uh, use that data to build a model. And then I'll evaluate the model based on a metric. And then I'll do a prediction using the model. So to load the data, I'm going to use the context and use data property. And on there, there's several methods that we can use. What I'll be using is load from text file. And this is actually a generic method. And it takes in what, what I like to call the schema input, which basically tells ML.NET what the schema of our data looks like. And uh, it's going to be a class and I'll call it salary data. Now let Visual Studio create this in a new file. Then in here, I just do a couple of fields here. And the first one is gonna be that years of experience, which I'll use as a float. And I'll call it years experience. And then the second one is gonna be the salary, which I also use as a float. Now for ML.net to read this in correctly, we need to add a couple of attributes. And it's gonna be the load column attribute. And that takes in a parameter here, which tells it basically what column that we're gonna read from. And since the years of experience is the first column, it's gonna be zero, it's gonna be zero based here. And then we do the same for the salary. That's gonna be the second one. Another attribute that we'll use pretty often when mo.net is called the column name. And I'll put in label here because we're using salary as our label for a machine learning model. And what this does is it, it tells ML.NET that this, we want our salary field to be named label when using in ML.NET pipelines. So basically we're, we're telling it to be sal, uh, telling it to be label, but we're going to use it as salary within our application. And that just allows us to make it more sense within our application. Instead of saying label all the time, we can say salary or uh, predicted house price or something like that. So we have our schema input. We have a couple of parameters for our load method here. First is the name of the file that we're going to load in. Next, uh, there are a couple of optional parameters. One has where we can tell if it has a header or not within the file, and this one does. And the, other one, and the other one is we can tell what separator we want it to use. And by default, it is a tab, but we're going to say this is a comma instead. As you can see, we have commas in our input file here. All right, so that's all we need to load the data. Just to build a model is we need to first create our pipeline. And with this 
we don't have much data here, uh, so we don't have a lot of data cleaning to do. But these pipelines can be pretty big. Ours is going to be real simple. First thing I'm going to do is uh, use a transform. And in MO.NET, a transform is anything that manipulates the, the input data into something else. And we're going to use the concatenate transform. And this takes in a couple of parameters here. The first one is what column name we want the output to be. I'm going to say I want the output to be features. And the input is going to be the year's experience. And we can add as many column names as we want in here. And then we can append to these as many times as we want to. But since that's all we need to do, I'm going to also put in what machine learning algorithm I want to use. And it's going to be a regression because we're going to predict uh, a numerical value here. And then we're going to use a trainer, which is the same thing as an algorithm. And I'll choose the this Poisson regression. Now there's a few parameters that we can use. First is the label column name, but that defaults to label. If you remember, we told our label field here to name it label, so we don't need to specify it within here. But there's also a feature column name that defaults to features. And that's the main reason why I did this transform here we can just use those default parameters here. Now we could just not use, not do this concatenate and put in years of experience as the input column name, as the features name. So that's our pipeline. Next thing is we need to fit our data on, onto it to create our model. So the pipeline.fit on our training data. And this is basically going to take, take our data run it across this pipeline and then it's going to create our model it's going to learn from our data once once it does this concatenate on everything then it's going to run through this algorithm to learn on our data and then i'll put a model for us so now we already have the model so that was actually not a lot of code to build our model there and we can evaluate it which means with we can take our model and see kind of how well our model performs on on data so I do create some predictions and I'm going to transform based on our model on some new data. And in fact, I forgot to do something. It's one thing we should all pretty much always do and that's called splitting our data. And so MLNet gives us a, a nifty method for us that we can do. Context.data that test train split. So we take in kind of the whole data that we load in here. We can also give it a test fraction, which I like to do 20%. So it takes 20% of our entire data and it saves that off as a test data. And then the rest of the 80% will be our training data. So we fit, we need to f always fit on our train set. And then when you evaluate on, we always do that on our test set. So now that we have predictions on our test set here, which basically it takes all of the inputs from the test set, the user experience, it runs that against the model and it gives, it gives outputs for it. And then with those, we can build metrics. And MO.NET gives us nifty methods for that as well. Since we're doing regression, we're going to call the regression that evaluate method. And then we give it our predictions. So that's going to take our predictions and it's going to evaluate it based on the data that it already has. Since it already has the labels in this data, it's going to take what it predicted from the model and compare it to what the actual values are. And then we can write out to the console. And I'm going to use R squared. And the thing with R squared is the closer to one that it is, then the better off the model performs. So do metrics that R squared. Then we we'll go ahead and do a console relearn so it doesn't disappear on me when I run it. So 
So that's how you evaluate the model. Next, we can predict on it with uh, our own new, new data. So I'm going to create a new salary data item here. And I'm just going to give it a years of experience. Uh, let's do 1.1. We get an error here because 1.1 is a double and we told told it that it's a float. So we can add an F to it to kind of add an F to it to kind of force it to be a float. And to create predictions, we need to create a prediction function. To do this, we use a context that model that create prediction engine. And this is also generic and actually takes two items here. First is a, kind of the input here, which we already did as a salary data. But the second one is going to be, they call it a destination, but I like to call it the output schema pretty much, which is kind of the, what our schema that we get from the output of the model. And I'll call it salary prediction because we haven't created this yet. And then from here, we just pass in the model. And I'll let Visual Studio create this again for me. Now in here, I'll just create a property. It's going to be a float, same as what our years of experience, our, our salary was in input. I'll let the same type be the same as the output. And I'll call it predicted salary. Now we also need an attribute here. It's going to be the column name. And this is going to be score. Now ML.net puts this as a score by default but we can kind of override it in our application as predicted salary. There we go, we have our prediction function. And with that, we can create a prediction by using prediction function that predict, pass in our new data. And with that, we can write it out to the console. Say prediction. It's gonna be prediction that predicted salary. Alright, so let's run this and make sure it runs okay. And there's one thing I always forget to do this when I put in a file into Visual Studio like this. I always forget to copy it when it builds. There we go. So we got R squared. It's uh, 94 percent it's pretty good and then our prediction of 1.1 years should be around forty two thousand dollars very good so that was kind of the updated version of the previous video that i did hopefully it shows you how to use how to do the same thing with the newest version of ml.net so thanks for watching and we'll see y'all next time